Hi and welcome to Neat AI. So this one is all about the crossover process in the Neat algorithm as it's explained in the original paper and code examples. It's the next installment in the exclusive OR solution series and details what happens after the speciation step is complete. The first three steps in the creation of the next generation of course are speciation, crossover and mutation. But before we get into it, I want to clarify a couple of points from the last video. As a population is undergoing the comparison check to see where each member belongs, the result of this check is compared with a threshold value. And I just want to focus on that for a moment. This threshold isn't static, it's going to vary depending on whether the number of species generated is above or below the target in any one generation. But the species target is one of those constants that you'll define at the start of your run, along with the population size and initial network node configurations as discussed in the Gen 0 video. In addition, you'll also need to define the step size used to adjust the threshold each generation. I simply set it to 0.5 for the exclusive OR solution, which works just fine. Ken used a figure of 0.3 when he started. You can see it in action here. I have a population of 50, a species target of 5, and a step size of 0.5. I've set the threshold for species inclusion to a high value of 100 at the start, so you can see the impact. So for generation 2, it gets reduced, this continues until it's low enough that not all population members get captured by species 1. And it keeps reducing until the number of species produced is greater than the target value. At which point the threshold will increase, then decrease, then increase and tends to bounce around, as it's rare to get exactly the target number of species produced. The other point I want to mention is the manner in which the initial species representative genome is chosen. For generation 1, it happens as shown in the last video, the network is chosen at random against which all other networks are compared, then another one is chosen as the species 2 representative, and so on. But from generation 2 onwards, all population members have been assigned to a species, so a representative is chosen at random from each species for comparison purposes. All other networks have their species IDs blanked, and they are then reassigned as described earlier. If any network doesn't make the cut, well it means another species is created. And now, what to do with all of this information that we have about the species and how to use it. In addition to the species group, we also know the average, adjusted average, and the number of offspring, and all of this must be captured somewhere. For this, I created a species array, and I'm also going to need a user-defined data type. I store the species ID, which is the same as the array index, the total members, allowed offspring, fitness, as well as the number of generations since the species improved. N penalizes a species if it hasn't improved in 15 generations, but doesn't state how. For exclusive OR, I simply set the number of allowed offspring to zero, which effectively kills off that species. This also stops bloat in the population, as simply having networks getting continuously larger without any increase in fitness can no longer happen. And then it's innovation IDs. Their primary purpose is to enable the easy comparison of connections within a network. All identical connections should have identical innovation IDs, and in the Gen 0 video, I describe how I implement this using a pre-populated lookup table. When a connection is added to a network, a simple lookup based on the connection node origin and termination points returns the innovation ID for that node pair. This works fine, but isn't aligned with the original approach in the paper, which describes a global innovation ID which gets incremented every time a new connection is added. So I rewrote the code, and now the lookup table is filled with zeros on startup. Every time a new connection is added to a network, the getInnovationID function will check the table, and if it returns a zero, it means that node pair connection has not been used before anywhere in the population. So a global innovation ID variable is incremented, and the value stored in the array. If it returns a non-zero value, of course, it simply uses that. So let's call speciation done, at least for now, and move on to the next stage, which is of course crossover. First thing I do is make a copy of the population array, move the contents into a temporary population array. I then reinitialize all members of the array back to basic networks. So it's not empty, but has initialized objects in it. The code then goes into a loop and starts producing offspring via the crossover approach. It gets the ID of the first species in the species array, which in this case is species one. It needs to select two of them to act as parents, and it does this using a roulette wheel selection. What's important here is that every member of the species has a chance to be selected. That chance is directly proportional to how fit a member is compared with other species members. If the same member is selected to act as both parents, that's fine in my implementation as although the offspring is a clone, it gets mutated in the final step. 
This approach also works if the species only has one member, as it will still return two parents. With the parent selected, the fitter parent is cloned. If the parents have equal fitness, then one is simply chosen at random. Matching connections are then checked and the connection weights in the offspring are zeroed and taken randomly from either parent. This offspring object then replaces the object in the first position of the population array and this repeats until the allowed offspring for species 1 have been produced. Routine, then moves on to species 2 and produces the allowed allotment of offspring and so on. If you were wondering about the elitism on switch, here's what it does. It finds the fittest network in the population and copies it directly into position 1. It's never mutated, so it preserves the best network found up to that point. And if a species hasn't improved in the allowed time frame and has had its allowed offspring zeroed, you'll end up with basic unevolved network objects in the population array, which is fine as their initialized routines have been run and they'll simply get swept into a species group the next time around. So that's our generation one population nearly ready to go. There's just a little matter of mutation to deal with. So if you're interested in that, you know what to do. And as always, thanks for watching.